I do have a question. Okay. Hey. With with Peter. Now, <laughs> to me, uh, and for most fans, and you know you hear it, oh, Peter's a nice guy. He's a, Okay, okay. But have you ever had an interview where you're asking him questions and he is not in the mood? Like, maybe he wasn't rude to you, but he was just like, Ali, you're going to have to piss off. I'm not in the mood. Have you ever had that interaction? Um, so like a couple of instances come to mind. <laughs> okay. Um. Ladies and gents, you saw the title again. I, I know, Kevin, Kevin, you're coming out with bangers. I know. Who who thought I could top Michele? I, I, think, I think we did it. Ladies and gents, you've seen her on the sideline. You've seen her traveling with the greatest team in Major League Soccer, <clears throat> in my opinion. Uh, you've seen her in international events, men's and women's. You're going to see her probably some more events and you know i don't think there is a more badass person uh in sporting universe and uh, besides players and you know that's a whole different thing but okay let's be respectful uh outside of players we have the goat ladies and gentlemen welcome in ali trost martin what's up ali hey you know nothing much so excited like I, i'll admit like there are interviews that i will do that i'm just kind of like okay yeah we'll do this like we'll talk sporting yeah. we'll talk current we'll talk, but like i like i asked you if i could come on your show which i've never done before so i am <laughs> absolutely pumped um yes. i love the work that you do huge huge fan so i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of geeking out right now this is Let's awesome go. Uh, me, me too it's kind of weird like knowing you from afar i and honestly i'm gonna be i'm set the record straight you messaged me in the perfect time because i had a slot i had things changing and it was it's perfect especially before the season i have a feeling when the season starts everyone's gonna be busy no one's gonna really want to be doing interviews it's gonna be a pain in the butt so it's just like it's just perfect it's perfect timing i think it was i'm so glad so I wanted to start out uh, by asking you uh, questions just like on your personal life and how things are going. We'll get into like Apple deal and your future and everything. But uh, from someone that really admires uh, sports reporters and anyone in the sports world outside of like the a athletes themselves, can you tell me how in the world did you get into sports reporting? Uh, it, did you even like this sport in general? Are you like a sport person? Like, I just want to know the beginnings of Ali and Ali, we have all day long. So go ahead, start when you want. <laughs> well, I ask myself this all the time. I mean, I truly feel like I am living out my dream. So I have many like pinch me moments that people actually pay me to do this for a job. Um, I have always loved sports. I grew up in a very sports centric family. I'm one of four kids. I have three younger brothers, so I'm the oldest. And while soccer was always my main thing, like I really didn't play any other organized sports. Now we played every sport that you can imagine at home growing up. Sure. Um, soccer was always kind of like my thing. I naturally gravitated to it as a kid. And actually it's like a huge sport within my family. My great uncle Al Trost actually was captain for the U S men's national team back in the day and played in the Olympics and, um, you know, always, I think, kind of was instrumental amongst other members of, of the Trost family in helping make soccer like kind of a thing within our yeah. family, not just, you know, like, hey, yeah, you can go play your organized sports. But like, even for Christmas the last 20 years, like we rent out an indoor soccer facility and go play soccer. Like that is how what? into dope. it we all are, which is so yeah. fun. And it's like kind of this thing that has really bonded our family. And it's something that I've always like, kind of identified with as like a part of me um, because of its connection within my family. So, you know, that's my great uncle. And then my grandpa was actually on the first ever national championship team at St. Louis University, which of course has been a big soccer powerhouse in the, yeah. in the collegiate space. And then my dad, you know, never played like really beyond high school, but is one of the most athletic people I know. Like the guy still runs marathons at like 55, 56 years what? old. Wow, and okay. I know insane. I don't like running that much, but he also, you know, was one of my first coaches and would always like play with me in the backyard. So I'd say like, I was introduced to soccer at a really young age and, and the sports thing, you know, with my brothers playing like hockey, football, basketball, like you name it, we were always like playing it. So sure. I've always kind of been into sports and I, in high school, I think really started to think about what I wanted to do as a career. And I had played at a really high level pretty much my entire life, all the way up until my senior year of college and looked into playing in, or in my senior year of high school, looked into playing in college, 
but had suffered a really bad back injury and also was just kind of like feeling like it was time for me to hang up the boots. And what yeah. I always tell people too, is that like, you know, back in, in my, back in my day when mm -hmm. I graduated <laughs> high school in, in 2013, yeah. like the NWSL had just formed. So it's not like, you know, unless you were kind of on the radar of the national team and were in like youth camps, there Not wasn't really a clear path yeah. um, after college. And so it was kind of like, okay, do I go do this thing for four years and then try to figure out what's next? And so all of that to say, I made the decision to go pursue a journalism degree in college, went to Mizzou, um, but actually didn't major in broadcast. So all of the broadcast work that I've done, um, all of kind of the reps I've gotten, like my first time doing anything on camera was like two months before I graduated from college. So really like what? I started, yeah. I mean, okay. I like to say that I'm a self-taught slash, you know, I have a lot of great mentors. Sure. Yeah. Hired a broadcast coach um, pretty soon after uh, I graduated and, and was really starting to get serious about this little side passion of mine, which just mm. so happened to be broadcasting. And so, you know, kind of one thing led to another, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, just kind of saying yes to different opportunities. And all of a sudden, here I am, it's 2023. And I am in a position that I can go full time freelance and just do a lot of the work I love. So I'm very thankful. That is like, so many different reasons why that's inspiring. But two, I, I don't even think about it. Well, one, because I'm a guy, but I don't really think about the opportunities that women didn't really have even like five, six, seven years ago to, to, to now. And now, uh, with athletes, it's kind of like that thing. I similarly was like in the situation where I'm like, ah, I'm kind of not really having fun. I'm, you know, there's there's definitely people better than me, and I'm like, ah, you know what? I let me just move on from this little dream. But at least I had there were there are options for for guys. There's like so many different leagues, so many different opportunities, and then for women, you don't really you know, you didn't really have that option, which is so nice now. The 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 league now here in the U.S. is blowing up. The, the Europe is like going crazy, They're selling out like ninety thousand seats and super awesome stuff. But it also kind of hurts for maybe other people like you in your position that maybe didn't go towards sports and did their own thing, but maybe in the back of their minds were like, ah, if I was just a little bit younger, maybe I could you know go this route or that route. But hopefully yeah. that didn't make you a little sour or anything. But I would no. I would understand it. Yeah. No, because I, I do feel like, you know, broadcasting really does like highlight, I think, some of the gifts that I've always had. I mean, I there's a story my mom tells when we had some guy over to our house doing some work like painting. Mm -hmm. And I just like plopped down next to him and was just like, meh, 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 like blabbing away. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, you know, probably kind of annoyed. And, sure. you know, it's like, oh, you're a little talker. And I'm like, I'm a little talker. And I was <laughs> like, I have always loved, you know, even before I decided I wanted to get into like broadcasting and TV and radio and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I always loved to write and, and tell stories. And, you know, they weren't necessarily about sports always. But like, that was just always something I enjoyed was like, telling and reading or hearing great stories. And I think like sports um, provides so many of those and soccer, especially just with like the, like the international, like global aspect oh, yeah. of it, the rich history of the sport. So I've always kind of loved that, but yeah, you know, I think part of me always like wondered, you know, if, if things had been different, like would I have pursued a professional career? Cause I, I did know girls my age who actually went and played abroad, but like looking back, I never like, there's really no one there to like tell you much about all of that stuff. Right. I mean, even now, like from a recruiting standpoint, there's so many more tools um, where you can like really showcase your, your work, so to speak. Sure. Like you can, um, you know, clip videos on YouTube of your highlights and put them, you know, up and can shoot them on a variety of things. You don't have to have like a nice camera. And, right. you know, yeah. I think while a lot of like younger athletes have that benefit, I definitely benefited from that like kind of evolution in, in technology and social media when I started my pursuit of a of a job in sports broadcasting because like 2018 I want to say it was I somehow convinced the sporting KC communication staff to let me do on field post game interviews with Peter Vermees on my Nikon camera and flimsy tripod like for the what? whole season like Peter and players I have zero idea like looking <sighs> back I have no idea. No how shot that, that got... happens anymore. No shot. No, absolutely not. And like, I have no idea how that got okayed. And it like the next season was no longer. Sure. Yeah. Like 
for obvious reasons. It should have <laughs> never been a thing. Um, and, but like, I'm so grateful that I got that opportunity because what I would do after the game is like, I'd go down there. Um, I'd have someone when I worked with the blue Testament, like come down with me, help me set up, shoot the interviews. I would go upstairs, plot my little SD card into my computer and edit those interviews in iMovie. And then yeah. I post them on Twitter. And like Twitter is where I really started, I think, to like kind of gain some some followers, some people like who followed the team or who followed Major League Soccer. And I mean, that's why like one of my biggest pieces of advice to people is just like post your work. You never know who's going to see it or how like that can just help you like really grow um, yeah. you know, your just credibility all sorts of those you know different things but that was really good experience and i will always sure. like be so you know grateful to peter especially because i mean like the guy has plenty of other things to do after a game than to go talk to the girl yeah. working with the blog on her nikon camera and like you know i made the mic flag myself and like <laughs> come over cool. and talk to me yeah but he did always treat me like i i was meant to be there and like with so much professionalism and i think like that really did a lot for my confidence just having the like reassurance that like I can do this and I like I I can be here and I sure, can you know yeah. be doing this job so I think like that was something that I'll always look back on is like number one how on earth did that like even how did that opportunity even exist for yeah, me at that time that and number two like it really I think did a lot for me um in kind of building that foundation and most importantly that confidence to to yeah. kind of keep going yeah, I I think that goes along the lines of like you just gotta you don't you never know if you don't ask kind of thing. I think yeah. that's kind of shocking to me. I know the, the league is young and it's not it's not that young, but it it's pretty young, especially compared to other leagues. But in in any other league, I just don't think that would happen ever. Are you no me? You're, no you're on the pitch talking to our coach? Are you insane? That you might get laughed at somewhere else, but. That's yeah. just so awesome that they they did that. I have questions for it with Peter later, but it's interesting that he, you know, he just took you not under his wing, but he just kind of trusted you, you know. I'm sure. I'm sure he wasn't like looking forward to it, but right. uh it's it's just like it's got to be an honor just for him to be like, "All right, let me give me I'll give you like 2 minutes and and we'll just yeah. knock this out or whatever." But that's freaking awesome. I I wanted to ask so I'm starting to learn from sports reporters, even people I follow, like when I was not, when I wasn't really talking to people like you, I always thought, oh, you know, they might have it easy. Like they go to college, they got their degree, and then maybe they just apply until something sticks. But what I'm learning is it's not really that way. It's more like you got to get lucky, one. Two, you just got it. Like you said, you just got to post whatever you're doing, whatever work you have, put it out there. Because it's not like uh, an easy little thing. I hey, I got my uh, I got a little degree here. Sporting Kansas City goes. Yep, you look good. You're in. You know, it's not like that at all. I think a lot of people might think how I thought at one point, where oh, you know, Allie's in. You know, they just found her. No big deal. But you had to grind. You had to like do your own thing first. You had to have the balls to ask someone to do that. That's insane. Um, it's just such a cool like I don't know. It's like inspiring even for someone that not really interested in sports reporting, but someone who's just interested in any type of goal or dream, it's like, okay, you just get, just try it. Just ask and maybe it'll happen. You never know. It's such, such a cool story. I never knew that. It's pretty awesome. But I do have a question. Okay. <laughs> with, with Peter now to me, uh, and for most fans, you know, you hear it. Oh, Peter's a nice guy. He's okay. Okay. But have you ever had an interview where you're asking him questions and he is not in the mood. Like, maybe he wasn't rude to you, but he was just like, Allie, you're going to have to piss off. I'm not in the mood. Have you ever had that interaction? Um, So, like, a couple of instances come to mind. <laughs> okay. Um, and, like, the first kind of just, like, generally speaking, like, when I first started doing the broadcast, we would do the halftime interview right before he would go into the tunnel and, like, to the locker room, which, like, it's just really never – a good idea because brave, like, yeah. they're in a rush they've got places to go and so like that like wasn't like a, there's not like a, a a specific example i have for that but just more of like i was really glad when we moved to doing it like after the halftime yeah. break because he has time to like talk with the, the rest of his staff and like the yes. players and you know all that but i'd say the one time that really was like <laughs> was <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, honestly, both same team against the same team, I believe. Or I may be getting this wrong. What was the game this summer where Cam Duke got a red card? I want to say it was Austin. I think it was. Yeah, I think it is yes. Austin. Yes. Yeah. It was. And that like really changed the game because I believe he gets the red card and then right after Austin score and go up like either 1 0, 2 0, yes. something. It changed yeah. the game. Turned it around completely. Yeah. Turned it around. Well, after the game, I want to say sporting like, God, did they finish that game like 2 1 or? I think it was close. Yeah. If if not, was it three two? I, we got we got two turnarounds from Austin last year. Yes, so, uh, I'm, it's one. I of can't those. remember how the game went, but either yeah. way, after both after both Austin games last year, the one in the summer at Children's Mercy Park where Cam Duke got the red card, yeah. and then the game at Austin uh -huh. where they blew a th three nil lead. Yeah, yes, yeah, something crazy. Yes, those were two of the most like angry i'd seen peter after a game for different reasons like the one in the summer peter never to his credit like he's very he is so media savvy like he is mm -hmm. he knows exactly how he wants to answer certain questions which is why like it's it's honestly such a fun challenge getting to interview him because it's like before he even walks over to you i do believe that he has like rehearsed all of the different like very quickly <laughs> things that you could ask him about like in his yeah. head yeah, so anytime we're sure. able to get him like th throw stump a question him. his way, yeah, yeah uh -huh. stump him like, yeah, it's kind of like all right. Or if Got he's him. like, oh, that was like a good question. It's like yes, yes, <laughs> your week um, is made. Yes, but no, those two times the one he just like went off on Cam Duke basically, and it was just oh. like I never like heard him really do that before. Yeah, and then the game at Austin, he was just like, I, I mean, that was Living. one of the like. There were a couple of like road trips that stand out where it was just like, I want to disappear. I want to be nowhere near anybody right now. Should I just book my own flight home? I think yeah. I'm going to do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that Austin game on the road was one of them. And he was like, as short, I don't even remember like the interview because it was so short, so fast. It was just like, get, get in, out. get out. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd say, like, depending on his like anger level, like that's kind of, and like the Portland game was another one, but I will say the one thing that is kind of interesting about Peter is like, there are some games that are losses where you might expect him to be a little bit more upset, but he's like actually not. And is really right. like complimentary of the team's effort. I think like with him, really the number one thing is like, he's always going to be like, he, he hates losing more than he loves winning. And like, he'll tell you that. Sure. Yeah. But I think he also just like hates nothing more than when guys don't try hard and when they don't like put in the effort or like, mm -hmm. you know, in his eyes, like kind of like lose the game for reasons other than like getting actually like outplayed or outclassed in like a particular moment that you just kind of have to tip your hat. So I'd say those interviews are usually the ones where, you know, especially if the game ends in like a really like devastating way where he's just kind of short. And, and another one would be the RSL uh decision day game that was yes i don't even like i stumbled so hard through asking those questions i was just like uh, the uh, what do you like, i like i don't even know if like actual like words came out of my mouth yeah, so yeah i don't know if that even answers your question but no, like yeah it I, does he yeah. because he's like a guy that uh so i talked to i've been talking to multiple people from different teams so they get their i get their point of view on peter and there's like two guys that people just cannot stand because of maybe their attitude or whatever. And they don't know them, obviously. And one is Peter and the other one is uh, Johnny Russell. And it's just because of their emotion. Like those are the two guys that on the, on the sideline and on the pitch, they, you could see their, you could see when they're pissed off, when they're, when they're celebrating, they go crazy. Maybe Peter Vermees trips a little bit on the sideline. Like we saw <laughs> last year, uh, you know, so, stuff like that. But, but they tell me that. So I, you get that, idea like okay are these guys like so i talked to johnny one of the nicest coolest dudes ever super funny the best i haven't talked to peter but from what i've heard he's actually like a really nice guy for the most part very calm you know steady minded like you said always prepared for interviews and all of that yeah it kind of gives me a different uh point of view on him i've always liked him he's one of the the goats of our of the game but uh, of coaching but i just always thought like okay is he just like losing his head every game like absolutely no. nuts no okay he's also in addition to those things he is hilarious like peter will 
have some like incredible like one liners every now and then and like he's always kind of giving the guys trouble and um yeah. you know something else that like stands out to me just when I think about him as like a coach and just a, an individual and especially like as a leader I mean he's been with this club for such a long time and that's not by accident um and, and one thing that really stand you know stood out to me that I just observed like in the last couple of years working so closely with the team was like there were a number of times on like away trips where like the you know plane would get up to like cruising altitude whatever you can get up and move about the cabin mm -hmm. and he would like get up and go into the back of the plane and like talk with guys and like kind of you know Hang interact with them which mm -hmm. I just I mean I have no other like example to kind of compare that to right. but um, I did find that like very unique and, and the guys do have like a ton of respect for him. And, um, you know, I, I just, I think yeah, Johnny, when I talked to him even recently, it was like, what's the number one thing you could do to piss Peter off. And he's like, not have efforts. So I think he just like, he, he genuinely does try to build a team of guys that like he would go to battle with. And I think sure. the comparisons you drew between him and Johnny are perfect examples why Johnny's the captain of this team. I mean, the captain is often the extension of the coach. And I think that they're just a great, captain coach duo and have a lot of like similar qualities and a lot of like similar priorities when it comes to to their jobs and and how they want to go about their business so yeah. um yeah it's been so fun working closely with the team and i just like yeah have so much respect for peter and i mean i'm i always just again when it comes to some of like the post game interviews there have been some tough ones but there have also been a lot of great ones and yeah. i always you know appreciate Peter's insights and just uh, he's such a has such a great soccer mind and is such a, a good I, I, he just is such a good person for this sport too and and for this league so I you know there there are some away fans that sometimes like to heckle at him a little bit but again sure. it's like you said I think it's just because he really does like he goes with so much emotion and doesn't hold anything back which he said is because like he, he does leave it all out on the field so that when after the game, you know, rolls around, if he's still mad, it had to have been like something really bad. But something other bad. than that, he's usually pretty calm after a game just because he was able to fully emote on the sideline in game. Yeah, Some of my fa most favorite coaches uh, while I was younger, people that uh, would t not talk down to you, but maybe at some points you build, you gain trust where they seem like a father figure or a motherly figure, some type of figure in your life that uh, you just don't want to let them down. And it seems like a lot of the players are like that. Like, I'm sure he went out on Camp Duke. I'm sure he was pretty mad. You know, Duke was upset with him, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, he, he understands why he's doing it, why he's yelling at him. You just let him down. You could have done better. He knows it. And those are like, those are the best coaches. That's why we've had him for so long. That's mm -hmm. why some people want to be asking some questions about the national team that he's not wanting to comment on and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, he's just like one of those coaches that I would want if I was a player. And I'm sure you would probably agree there. But yeah, I've always I, I'm glad you answered that because I need I need someone other than a player because the players give me the same BS. You know, he's a good guy. OK, great. <laughs> I want to hear I want to see what he's yelling at you, how you really feel. So it's kind of good to get your point of view. Um, you reminded me of another question I have for you. So a lot of times, uh, especially people, well, mostly people who work with, uh, news agencies, they have like this way of speaking. Uh, I'm going <coughs> to teach you this in, in, in school. You have to, you have, you know, you have to have good, um, oh my God, I'm a theater kid. I can't even think of the word. Um, is it like enunciation? Yeah, enunciation. Or? You have to, you know, be very clear with how you speak, and you can't really stumble. And and I I even recognize when I'm watching, uh, I don't know, some sporting event, and they stumble. I I even think like, oh, how are you going to stumble? Embarrassing. Like like <laughs> like they're not live in front of thousands of people, and like not they're not a human being. But with you, like you're picking up, you're doing it on your own. You realize later in life that you wanted to do this. Um, did did you ever get used to this like how speaking like on the spot getting nervous about stumbling maybe there's crazy names that you have to pronounce and and, and things like that like how did that go for you yeah so i'd say like more than anything else and it's so funny like thinking back to when i first started compared to now because like mm -hmm. I don't think that in this profession there's ever a point that you get to where you feel like you've like mastered it. 
I think like it's something that you're always going to keep working at. And it's also not really a thing that you can get comfortable with because it's like every game is so different. And even though you might get really comfortable with a, a particular team, like, I mean, there's always new names to learn. There's always like new like stories to tell situations. It's like you get better. But like, I just I think it's just a lifelong pursuit of, you know, I, I don't want, even want to say like mastery, but you know, sure, you're just, yeah. you're always like improving and getting better. And I mean, I'll even listen to stuff from this last season or, or 2021 where I was like, Oh, that was great. And it's like, I'll listen back. And it's like, Oh yeah, that was good. But like, you know, I could have sounded a little bit more like me or, or uh -huh. this, that, and the other. And when it comes to the broadcast voice, I think it's interesting. Like I definitely do have a voice that I turn on when I'm like doing radio, oh, yeah. doing TV, doing interviews. Sure. Uh -huh. But I also like, I never, because I didn't do broadcast in college, like I never got that like actual like TV broadcast voice. Like I think anything that I do now is just like a kind of like just my natural voice itself. Yeah. And then like talking with mentors, coaches, and just delivery. I mean, I think delivery is always something that's kind of, you know, hard to nail, especially if you're talking about something that's like really emotional or you're trying to like set the the mood around whatever like the the story is that you're delivering you really want to emphasize like the important points um but yeah the as far as like getting nervous and stumbling and things like that mm -hmm. when I first started doing this whole thing and was like pursuing stuff on my own like I got into it originally because I love interviewing people so that's why like the sideline reporter job was honestly like a dream come true for me because the thing that interested me most about this profession was getting a chance to like interview people yeah. um and and I felt like that was where I was most natural now what's shifted is that like I remember when I would first start doing those interviews I would like write out every single question verb mm -hmm and then that would lead to me getting in my head and maybe like stumbling over a word or just not being able to be flexible enough in the interview which I think the best thing you can do in an interview is like yeah you come in prepared you kind of know what it is you want to talk about you have the proper like information top of mind that you might need to recall but like don't let your information and I've learned this just because the best interviews I've ever had have been when I kind of just like let them lead me and like instead view myself as more of just like I am a vehicle for this like getting yeah. this conversation you know in, in a place that the individual I'm interviewing is comfortable that provides the most like information and entertainment or whatever it is to the fans and um, you know the relationship building is also key in that as well like that's a huge part of my job that you know I, I think as I've come to realize it's probably like the most important part of my job like you could be the best interviewer or, you know, be the most prepared on the planet. But like, if you don't have a good relationship or if you haven't put in the time, even if it's just a short amount of time to make someone feel comfortable enough interviewing you, it's going to like come across on screen. But the interviewing thing I've always loved, the stand up solo on camera stuff. Uh -huh. No, yeah, like no. <laughs> I hate like shaking, like so really? scared to do some of that. And I would make myself when I, you know, still using my my solo camera, would make myself go out and like film stand up reports and like, gosh, they are so like stiff and like rigid it's, when it's I watch them awkward, back now. Right? Yeah. So awkward because I was so uncomfortable doing it, and now like I'm more and more comfortable. But I still like I'll admit like get nervous from time to time, and you know I think it's just like always remembering it and like. There are little tricks that I picked up kind of over the years, but one of my favorites, actually, my husband told me because he used to work in TV. Right. And that is like, sometimes you kind of have to like, because I'm so much more comfortable talking to a room of people than just like a black camera staring at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was like, you almost have to at times like, like flirt with the camera a little bit, like talk to yeah. the camera, like people say it all the time, but like talk to the camera, like you're talking to your mom or your best friend. And while like, that's good advice. Like it can be like hard to get in. You know, I think that's just where reps come in and stuff like that. Sure. But I definitely get nervous. I've I've had, you know, my fumbles on air, but I think something I've really tried to work on in the past like year, especially, is just not holding myself to this standard of perfection that early on I definitely did. And it would take so much of the joy out of the job for me. Like there were games where I'm not kidding, I would come home and I would just be like, playing over and over in my mind like Those god moments. i stumbled through that hit i hate the way i asked that question and while yes. like it's good to be self-critical and like try to strive to get better you also got to give yourself some grace sometimes and just be like hey that wasn't perfect but like you're the only person holding yourself to this standard and i was so overly focused on 
my performance, my performance, my performance that I was like failing to keep in mind the other parts of my job that are really important, which are to connect with the fans, to connect with the the team, the coaches, the players, like to be authentic, like be myself, like don't be so caught up on an outcome that hasn't happened yet. Like being in the moment and letting that be the focus instead of the outcome or the performance. I think like that little shift in my mindset is really helped me have a lot less like anxiety or perfectionism in my work and has also allowed me to enjoy it a lot more and just be okay if I do make a mistake because like you said you're live on tv it's hard to be perfect no matter how prepared you are but I always make sure like my goal is to never let a mistake be the result of not being prepared enough and just to have it be something that like is either out of my control or just like a human error so that's kind of where I'm at in that but that's you know probably the part of the the job and the journey that has like been the hardest but it's also I'm so happy with like what it's uh, like taught me about myself and how I think it's like made me an even better person or like just overcoming that and navigating that I think was like really important just like for my personal growth as well I I I think that's like so obvious uh for some people when when they tell you that like I remember like first year of college they're they're, they're like, okay, well, you practice at home with your camera. And I'm like, dude, totally not, like, not even worth my time. I'm going to come <laughs> in this class and I'm going to be totally natural. And then, like, you bomb and you, you're, you're freaking out. And then you look at, like you said, you're looking at a camera and you're like, I can't speak naturally to this. But uh, <laughs> luckily, that's like what people like, people start YouTube channels. They're like, I can't yeah. start a YouTube channel because I can't talk to myself. It's like, dude. You're going to have to learn because you, yes. someone like you, you're, you're like talking for not just like, not just for yourself or the club or whoever you're like talking for the fans. So you mm-hmm. come up with questions. You want to be natural. You want to be like, okay, the fans would really like to know this. So let me ask this. And sometimes it comes naturally. Sometimes it, you can't do that when you're like super stiff thinking about the, this one question. I have this one question. I have to ask this one question and I, I can yes. see you slowly stumbling. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's good to hear that. Like, I want to finish this later. I, I think if you have time, uh, uh-huh. with with um, like I want to finish this off with what you would say to someone who wants to be a sports reporter. But before we get there, uh, little elephant in the room. So some people may know, uh, MLS and Apple have partnered together. Now all the games are going to be on Apple TV Plus. Um, with that uh, came out news a while ago. That a lot of the uh, sideline reporters and a lot of the some of the media personnel for the clubs will not move forward with the Apple TV Plus deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of us as fans, I, I mean, the first names that came up with you were you and Nate for, and Sporting World. But that's, this is happening for everyone and every team in ma- Major League Soccer. So we got I got to ask and everyone's asking, um, like, what does that mean for you? Like, what what's going to happen this season? Uh what what's going to happen for your future? Do you have upcoming events? Like what's going on in Alley World? Yeah, so I'll admit like that was definitely a really tough thing last year just getting that news. I mean, it was like it was kind of bittersweet, right? Cuz on one hand, I'm like so excited for the growth of the league and think that the international access is going to be incredible, especially for, you know, Um, players who are interested in MLS, like, you know, so many guys you talk to that come over, it's like, oh, did you watch a lot of the games? They're like, well, no, because it's an eight hour time difference. I'm half, you know, I'm asleep or whatever. And so I think like, you know, for, for guys who maybe are interested in MLS, want to know more about it, are planning on coming over here at some point or, you know, or have a deal in the works or like the families of a lot of these players. um, I think it's awesome. I think I really do. And I, I have a lot of confidence that, you know, it's just only going to keep getting better. I know there's a lot of question marks ahead of the start of this season, but there are so many great people involved in this. And while I, you know, was informed that they wouldn't have sideline reporters, at least at the start, like I, I just signed with an agent recently, which I'm really excited about. That was a whole other process that I can get into at, at another time. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, just again, things that you kind of learn through um, as you just kind of keep advancing. But you know, I, I have a lot of confidence that at some point that could be a thing. And if it is, like, I'd love to be considered or, or in the running for some of those opportunities. But, you know, I'm really using that change with not having any more local TV broadcasts with sporting to try to, like, diversify a little bit. I have been encouraged mostly by Nate, uh, Bukati, and also other mentors to, like, start pursuing some play-by-play. And I did some games last year on Paramount Plus for the NWSL. Yeah. And... 
really enjoyed it like a lot more than I thought. And it's something I want to try to keep growing in. And I have some exciting opportunities coming up in the play by play space, which I can't wait to share just because I, you know, I'm always like wanting to challenge myself. And I think this is just something that like, it's a, it's a skill and a tool that I really want to add to my tool belt. And also something that like, I genuinely think I could become good at, like, if I kind of put the time in and keep pursuing just different things, like I'm really excited about that. But I will be working with sporting again this year, which I'm really excited about. So a mix of content, um, some radio broadcast stuff, which I'm thrilled about as well. And yeah, I'm just excited to keep covering the team that I love. Like I love Kansas City. I've lived here now for a little over five years and I'm just honored that it was able to work out to where I could come back and, and do stuff with the, with the club. I'll be doing stuff with The Current. I'll be doing, you know, a lot of other freelance work, probably going down and calling some more NWSL games on Paramount Plus. So a lot of things kind of in the works right now, but you know, it, it's all, it's all good. Like yeah. if I had gotten a chance to do some sidelines for Apple TV or, you know, at some point could even grow into, um, you know, a a different role that could be utilized by them. Great. It's just, I'm going to keep challenging myself and covering the sport I love and seeing kind of where that takes me. But that's kind of like the update for now. And yeah, I'm just like so pumped for the season to get started. I can't believe we're just like a couple of weeks away. I feel like with the World Cup this last year and sporting season ending the way that it did. Um, It just, it felt like such a long, especially compared (laughs) to the year prior, it felt like such a long off season. But, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot to be excited about with where this team's at and going to be an interesting season. I mean, you add in the league's cup, they're looking to change the playoff format again. It's just Mm. like, there's a lot, a lot coming. I think, uh, well, I'm glad that you're you're still working with the club, but like, like you said, there's still an upside because, you get more time to do, like you said, go in different fields. I, you're like calling for like boxing or what's what's going on? Oh, MMA yeah. stuff? Like what I, the hell? I, oh my gosh. Yeah. So actually a director that I had worked some sporting games in the past, like came up to me or, you know, reached out to me and was like, hey, would you be interested in doing reporting for this like women's MMA promotion called Invicta FC? And I was like, I mean, yes, but you do know that number one, I have, literally no fighting experience whatsoever. And in addition to not having any, any experience, like work experience in fighting, I also have like, don't really even watch the sport. And he's like, yeah. no, 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 it's okay. You'll be good. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, sure. So whatever you say. Yeah. And honestly, I think I've worked like four fights now. Love it. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. I've learned a lot about like MMA in general. Um, the fighters have some of the most incredible stories and it is a job and a role that like totally keeps me on my toes. You like some of these post fight interviews have gotten like gone off the rails and I'm just like, ah, like that's awesome. I love that. Oh, sure. Calling out like, you know, someone else. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, which (laughs) is is a really cool thing. And it it kind of blends like my love of emceeing and reporting, which is kind of nice because it is like, you know, it's broadcast out over the stream, but it's also like broadcast into the like the venue. And so it allows me to kind of mix those those two things into into one role. But it's been really fun. You know, again, like I've always just kind of been of the mindset that I'm going to try anything. And that's always my advice to like up and coming broadcasters or people who are interested in working in this field, especially women like don't come into it thinking that like you can only do one type of job or that you only want to do one type of job. Like maybe at some point in your career, you have the luxury of being like, I am this one thing and this is the one thing I'm going to do. And there are always going to be jobs available for me to do this one thing. Cause I, I think as we've seen, like the industry just changes so much and the types of jobs available change. I mean, like sports betting is a whole new industry yeah, within true. the sports industry with all these new job opportunities and stuff. So it's just like being open to trying new things. Like we'll just always be a mindset that I'll try to have because I've already been surprised pleasantly by things that I've, you know, just kind of said, why the heck not? Like, let's do it. And um, it's, it's made the job even more fun knowing that like, Hey, I stepped out of my comfort zone and it actually went well and it was fun and I enjoyed sure. it. And that could be something that like, you know, I do more of for the next 20 years. Like this is something I want to have a career in. And so knowing that I want to be doing some type of job in this industry when I'm like 50 
I know that I need to like be willing to to try new things and keep an open mind. Yeah, I think that's uh, with Apple. Uh, you look, yeah. we're year one, and a lot of there's so many people like you, but it's just year one. And like you said, I think it is going to progress the the league, and you're going to see more money, more investments, and yeah, I think we are going to get back to the point where we're going to have to have you know sideline reporters everywhere and more of them and we're gonna need people like you again so it makes sense that like year one we got a small crew and then we slowly grow out so i'm i'm sure we're gonna see you again apple tv plus world i'm sure of it okay just hey, letting you that's know that's the goal and yeah. you know another big goal that i have because before my my goal when i first moved to kc was to get on the local broadcast for sporting kc and like i'm very grateful that that was something I was able to achieve, even if it was because it was just like, oh, God, Allie's been around for years, I guess we'll hire her for this. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. not that, that was really the case. But, you know, I was I, just, I was just around and I knew the team and, you know, was involved enough in enough, you know, different things. But I think, you know, my next kind of like big North Star kind of goal would be to cover a World Cup. Um, that's just a dream. There's one coming, you know. We got... I know that's Something I've got circled, you know, is just like, man, if that's, you know, locally here or like, you know, domestically or, you know, God forbid I get to actually go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think happy. someone that's kind of like inspired me. Uh, because God willing, he, not God forbid. God willing. Yeah, God willing. Go. Yeah, yeah. God forbid. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <be> no. That. <laughs> uh, is Jimmy Conrad like he uh, I know he's, Love Jimmy. Uh, you know, he's past player. Uh, he went to the World Cup in Qatar, and I was like working with him there. And he was like, you know, telling me all these behind the scenes, and like telling me, look, if you want to get into broadcasting, here's. And I, I don't, but like I learned a lot from him. And that is the thing, like you just gotta be, you just gotta be like present, and you you never know, like something will just happen, and it's perfect for people like you for the World Cup to be coming in the U.S. again because it's. They're going to be looking at our own people, obviously, and they're going to be looking. I'm going to, and plus, there's more teams. The tournament's bigger. It's going to be insane, and they can't fly everyone everywhere. We got games in Kansas City, which is another dope thing. Like, there's so many opportunities. So I'm, I can't wait for your future. Uh, so I'm very excited. Uh, but I, I, I want to ask, like, you already throughout this whole uh, talk that we've had, you've sprinkled in some tips and stuff. But do you have some pointers on up and coming broadcasters, anyone that's like trying to do what you do. Do you have anything I've, you mentioned a lot, so you maybe not anymore, but is there anything you do? Yeah. Want to mention? Yeah. I mean, I'll probably repeat some, but like, I do sure. think I've kind of nailed down a list of things that like, I try to keep top of mind and are things that I definitely had to like, like learn my way through. Um, number one, post your work, share your work. Um, that is one of the best ways I think to get in front of people, whether it's getting in front of an agent or someone who might inquire, um, about hiring you at some point. You just never know who's watching. You really don't. I think especially like on social media and like on Twitter, everyone who works in sports is on Twitter. So right. that to me is like, why not post your work there? Like your chances are you're going to get in front of somebody who um, would be the right person, maybe not right now, but at some point in your career, you just never know. So post right. your work is number one. Number two, shoot your shot slide into someone's dms do not be shy like when the casey current was announced to be coming to kansas city the first thing i did was dm chris long and i was like hey we should work together and that's yeah. kind of like how i got a chance to work with them in their inaugural season so like shoot your shot you never know i know it can be so awkward at times reaching out to people that you don't know and especially if they don't respond but you never know if you don't try so i always just say like shoot your shot send someone a message sure. and um you might be surprised um the third thing would definitely be, I, I know like it's said all the time, like, you know, be yourself. But what I would like add on to that is like, don't hold yourself to an unrealistic standard that forces you to be somebody else. Like there are so many people that you can look to and look up to and emulate and, and want to be like in certain ways, but don't try so hard to be something else that you are at the same time then like taking away from what makes you special and unique. They already have, you know, that person that you're looking up to doing that role. They've already seen that, that, that already exists. Like what they don't have or don't see yet is what you can bring to the table. That's unique to you. So I always just say like, tap into what makes you unique and don't be afraid to like, just be a hundred percent yourself because it can be like, this job is exhausting enough. It's even more exhausting if you feel like you've got to constantly 
try to be something that you're not. So that would be another kind of thing that I would recommend. I don't know if that was like tip number three, but number yeah. four is I kind of touched on this like a little bit, but didn't really get into it. Relationships, like relationships, relationships, relationships are everything. And I think I learned that like in a new way, working as closely with sporting as I did the last couple of years, like traveling with the team, fully understanding like the grind of everything. Um, you know, <laughs> it can be really, I think, tiring for for athletes to like feel like, every interaction that they have with a media member is just getting bombarded with questions about their job and like individuals like in the media space taking zero time to like try to even get to know them as people which can be really hard like it's yeah you know you got a job to do you got deadlines to meet but I do think like the more that you can try even if it's not every time to just like kind of pull back the curtain a little bit show interest in these people's lives and like their families and things that are important to them besides their job, like that really does go a long way and is something that like, I always try to kind of lead with, you know, not even just with like the athletes and the teams that I cover, but even just with like other mentors that I look up to and, and talk with on a regular basis, like some good advice I got early on was like, if you reach out to somebody 10 times, make sure you're not like something nine of those 10 times, like try to like really, you know, actually express interest or like ask how people are doing. And just, it really does go a long way and can help create stronger relationships in this field that don't feel as transactional in a business that like at times really is like super transactional. So like, right, yeah. that would be my other piece of advice. And last but not least, tip number five would just be step outside of your comfort zone. If you hate doing standups, go get your butt outside, set up your camera and force yourself to do it. Like the best way to learn is through experience. And there are so many excuses you can give yourself as to why like, oh, I don't need to do this or I don't need to do that. But like, I can promise you, it is always going to help you make you better. And it's something that, you know, I still to this day, I'm always like, how can I, I mean, even like doing some more of this play by play stuff. I'm like, I'm about to go back and put like an old sporting game on mute and kind of go Let's back go. and find like the rosters for those games and just like call it from my couch, you know, like yeah. put yourself in situations, even if it feels silly and you're talking to yourself, um, you know, reps, reps, reps are the best way to grow in this industry. I am the perfect example of that. Having not majored in broadcast, like I got all of my opportunities and reps post-grad on the side working full-time in a different industry, but wanting to pursue this job. Like if, if I can do it, literally anybody can do it. Cause you know, sure, it was yeah. just a lot of repetition. So those would be like, I guess my five like top pieces of advice. Those are solid. I think that's why you have been well liked with both uh, Casey current and sporting and I'm sure everywhere else, but uh, you have to feel if you're a viewer, you want to see someone that's like relatable, not like so like if you if you have those moments where, OK, it obviously she knows what she's talking about, clearly. But two, uh, it, you just seem like a normal person asking these <laughs> normal questions instead of sounding like a little robot in front of all these people. And it's just like one of the reasons why you're liked and why a lot of people think you're going to be moving on to uh, big things, hopefully, and hopefully sooner than later. Um, well, I appreciate that. And it I, actually, like, it makes me want to add one more to that. Yeah. And it's like, it's not about you. And like, I think in this industry, that can be really hard because like a lot of sports media people are personalities and maybe in certain jobs within this industry, like it is about you. But like, as I said earlier, like the more focus I was putting on myself, the less I was enjoying my job. Mm -hmm. And the more I was, you know, self critiquing or just like, so like looking inward all the time, like find ways that you can kind of like see this job as a way to like help others or be a part of something bigger because it really is like it can be so easy with how like individual parts of it feel to like really kind of turn inward but it it, it isn't it isn't always about you and like yeah. I, I think that was like an important like realization for me to have was you know they're like you're part of something bigger so I mean, look for me I'm, I'm writing down some things you're saying I'm learning myself <laughs> like I'm not in broadcast world even though I was when I was talking to uh, Michaela the other the other week and whenever we did it, he 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 was like, uh, "You basically are a broadcaster, you know that." And I'm like, "No, because I am 
nobody cares if I stumble for two hours. I'm fine, you know, <laughs> I'm good. But but there is things that you mentioned that uh, are relevant even for people who are starting podcasts, YouTube channels, stuff like that. Like reaching out to people, you never know who's going to answer back. Yes. The biggest thing I think you said to me is uh, every, you never know who's watching. And there are people that are watching, even though you don't think anyone's watching. Uh, mm -hmm. Like anytime I got reached out by someone totally random and never thought knew who I was or anything. I'm just like, how did you even find me, dude? Like, this is the weirdest yeah. thing, but people are definitely watching, which is uh, something I need to learn uh, faster and, uh, than not. Because I think sometimes, especially on Twitter, I'm like, oh, this is a little goof and gab. And then I, I realize, oh, uh, NWSL just followed me yesterday. Cool. I should probably <laughs> not say anything wild right now or, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, I think that's very relevant. It's kind of cool to hear you say that instead of just me thinking it. I think anybody in like a, a space where, and I know people who work like now that you see so many people who are like creatives in the sports industry, whether that's through graphic design video and like, just post your work, just post it. You like, I, Screw it. it can be, I think, and I know for myself at times we'll be like, Oh, you know, like, you know, what's the point of posting that or what, you know, but it's like, no, that is actually like, something that you should be doing on a regular basis if you work in this industry, like post that interview that you did, post that hit that you had on the sideline or um, that story that you told on set and just see what happens. But no, I mean, I think like, while you may not be a like sports broadcaster necessarily, like you work in this, like you do work in the sports space and create content. And I think content nowadays, like one, it's, it's something that I think more sports fans are seeking than ever before. It's something that like teams and leagues are putting a, a priority on. And it's also something that like allows people to really show their personalities and you just never know like where that could go. And if anything, like one thing I want to do more of is like show more of my personality in my work and do things that allow me to, to do some of that on a more regular basis or like in a different way than maybe people are accustomed to seeing it. So kudos to you. And yes, like I think some of those tips, like I know like there are five things I try to live by, but it's also relevant beyond the sports industry. I think like putting yourself out there is really hard and it's something that like takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery, but it's also something that like can be incredibly rewarding, but you got to start somewhere. We got some time before this season starts, a little bit of time, and I know you you started up not uh, pretty recently uh, doing interviews with uh, the Kansas City Sports Network, right? Or is, is that like a new Yeah, our thing, shows right? are called like the same thing. It's like Soccer I, Talks and Funny, funny Talks. Talk, I mean, come on. that Look, we're basically best friends. Are we best friends or what? I like, think we're come best on. friends. I yeah. felt bad. I was like, did I like no, no. name over here? Oh, heck I... no. No, no, no. I, and I saw... I mean, it's cool because um, you have all the connections. So for anyone who's like, what the hell are they talking about? Uh, Ali has a soccer talk channel. Or sh should I say channel? Like, how do I even say this? So KCSN Sports Network has their own channel, right? Yeah. So KCSN, um, which was started by BJ Kissel, has just launched a new soccer channel. So it's, um, you know, they've got shows that cover, you know, they brought over No Other Pod that covers um sporting kc they've got a show that covers the Kansas city current and then my show is called soccer talks and basically it's just interviews and conversations with people in the sport of soccer so there's a lot of focus on sporting kc and the kc current and stuff going around uh going on around kansas city but it's also a show that'll focus on other like relevant like u.s kind of related sports sure. uh or soccer to uh, topics as well so it's just kind of like a catch-all that allows me to you know, have conversations with people I've built up relationships with um, and just kind of talk about soccer, talk about like, you know, things personal to, to the athletes or the coaches that I talk with and hopefully just provide more soccer content for fans because I know that that's something, even when I moved here like five years ago, it's crazy to see um, how much the interest in the sport has continued to grow and how the sport itself, you know, men's and women's has, has you know, both have really grown over the last five years. And I think the next five, 10 years are going to be massive. So I'm really excited to see where it goes and want to just keep bringing fans in Kansas city closer to the teams and the sport that they either already love are just starting to love, or maybe they don't know that they love it yet. Yeah. 
No, yeah, it's great. I saw some video or some episodes, and I was like, man, this is you had P- you had Peter on right recently. No, was that oh, was no, the no guys other pod with the no other pod. Yes. Great episode. They yes. were brave enough to ask him about the sideline tumbles, which I don't, <laughs> don't know you would ask. if I would personally. So I'm really glad that they did. You know, I I haven't even. I don't think he would come on, but I haven't even reached out. But I know in my brain that if I like he that's why I wanted to kind of test the water. But I asked you, I've been asking other players and I'm like, all right, where how do I not piss him off? You know, and there's not <laughs> been a very clear answer. But if that day ever comes, I'm just going to copy everyone else and make sure I don't say anything. Cra- I, I definitely wouldn't ask the stumble thing. Those guys are nuts for asking that. I will, I'll tell you one other thing that Peter doesn't like, and I mm. see it happen a lot in press conferences. When you ask Peter a question, just ask him a question. Don't say something that implies you are like, you or generally speaking, like your perspective on something is the way that it is. Like, mm. you know, Peter, it looked like, you know, you guys just kind of really struggled to, you know, uh, break down the Dallas back line like let's just and he could come back with like no I actually thought you know we were like don't ever like go at it with like saying like something general like a takeaway from the game as if like that's just the way that it was like let him tell you what he thinks like the best thing to do with him is just ask a question see where he goes and then like ask another you know just question yeah, bounce off of that don't, yeah no statements no like <laughs> oh it looked like to me or i thought this just ask oh no god question. no yeah that's a good that is a great point writing that down because i feel like it is natural to be like hey, you know it looked like yeah and that you're done he, he, I'm, I'm sure so that's a good yeah good point thank you writing that down um cool uh, so for anywhere else so you got soccer talk on YouTube. Is it also a podcast? Like, can you listen? Yeah, wherever strictly? you get your podcasts, um, you can subscribe to the KCSN soccer channel on YouTube. And yeah, about Wait. to be real busy as the season seasons start to roll around for NWSL and MLS. But I'm true. really excited. It's going to be a really fun year. So it'll be a lot oh, of fun. Great. I'm going to link that. Uh, obviously, link uh, your Twitter and then Instagram if you're I, I'm. I don't really have an Instagram. Yeah, but, like yeah. Instagram is always kind of like funny to me. I use it for more of just like my personal life. Okay, uh, okay. Than anything so not else, necessarily, like, yeah. I post some work there. I just don't think any of my followers on Instagram are really like people who follow yeah. Does me. Does my brother really my care? Job. You know, that, yeah, yeah, I get that. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. All right, well, not that. I'll I'll, ha- I'll have everything in the description. Allie, thank you so much for coming on. This was fun. I can't this wait for fun. people to watch it. Uh, we should do it again sometime. I'm sure it's going to yes. be very crazy for you. The, the see, we'll find a time, something wild. Hopefully, you know, we're above 500 at that point. We're like maybe going to the play. Oh, we'll, we'll see, hopefully. Hey, um, with if they do expand it to where 18 teams, nine from each conference, make the playoffs, like, we're sleeping. I mean, there's <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> and no doubt in my mind that sporting yeah. makes the playoffs this the other year. Thing that um, I w- I, we could end it with is look, I'm not one person, especially with like how the World Cup went. I don't like to jinx nothing. All right, I mm-hmm. want to stay away from any jinxing. But Kansas City Current looks pretty damn good and very scary. And I know just because you have all these good players doesn't mean you're going to be good. But my God, can I not wait for March or whenever we kick off? I. I'm so excited. Like uh, we got I just feel like this, on this team, team. Yeah. And I think like the one thing that really stands out to me like a couple of things. Yeah. Number 1, the depth that I feel like they have now with some of the new players that they've brought in through all of the different ways that you can acquire players. Like they got stronger <laughs> in just about every position group. Uh-huh. Even with an unknown timeline for Sam Uis and trading Lynn Williams. Like the fact that those were the two big names going into last season. And now they're not even, you know, Sam just TBD on her involvement with the team, like just the aggressiveness of the front office and, and just how they've kind of put this team together. It is so true to like the ownership group, like they're so competitive. And I do think too, like something that I'm really excited about is I feel like they've got, like goals that can come from like almost every position, like along the back line, you've got players who can score some bangers 
oh, adding yeah. Dabinia to this team is just like one of the most exciting things ever. Like she is a she is a success multiplier. Like she is going to make this team and the players around her so much better. And then I think you also in adding some of the players that they did, like create a lot of really good competition within some of these position groups. So I'm excited to see what this team, like who they run out as like their starting lineup. Cause you could make an argument for a number of players and a number of, um, you know, different options there. So yeah, I'm excited. And I think, you know, when it comes to sporting and this upcoming MLS season, you know, I know that one of the big areas of debate is like, okay, like who's going to start at the nine. Is it going to be Polito? Is it going to be Agata? There's going to be plenty of, of time and opportunity for both of them to make huge impacts with just how many games and competitions there are this season. Like yeah. I think the teams that are going to do well in MLS this year are going to be the teams that have the deepest rosters. And that is just going to be so important because injuries are going to crop up. It's just, yeah. there's, just, it's going happens, to be impossible yeah. for them not to, or just going to take, I think full rosters to really, find success and I mean look at last year LAFC they by far had the deepest team of anyone in the league yes. um you could and argue that their bench yeah and it did so I I'm just really excited um for both teams I think it's gonna be an exciting year of soccer in Kansas City and yeah fans are just uh really lucky and let's get some more championship parades coming for real, we hopefully we get one Sunday or not Sunday, but we get to next know week. we're gonna have one next week. Uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, look, I had I had a buddy of mine say um, he's not a current fan, but he goes, oh, you know, basically, uh, Caden City Currents like uh, Brazil coming into this World Cup. I mean, they're stacked; that everyone favors them, which is not very good because it didn't end very well for them. But that's something we have to think about. We gotta tell the girls, listen, we are stacked; we look good. Luckily, there's not too many teams right now. We're in like early phases of expansions and stuff like that. So I don't think it's going to be like a MLS slash Brazil World Cup situation. I think we're going to be pretty damn good. Uh, but again, I don't. Yeah. Knock it no, on wood. I said you know. Yeah. Well, I think if you look at like even just like the history of the NWSL, like the teams that have had the most talent and have been the most stacked, like have won a yeah. lot. Like Portland. Yes. Had the most talented roster, yeah. arguably, over the last however many years. Like, I'd say the one year that was kind of an outlier to an extent was, like, when Washington won. I think that kind of, like, yeah. surprised that was a weird some year. people. But, like, I mean, I just think Kansas City is building a championship team. And hopefully that means coming in and winning the championship this year. But I think they've got so much great experience uh, on this roster and could be that next dynasty team in the NWSL, which I mean, is pretty Ooh. incredible considering where they were in 2021. So Definitely. it's really been fun to watch. Oh God, I can't wait. I'm so hyped. It feels so far away for both seasons. We're closer to I one, know. but it's still, it's still like several weeks out, but okay. Ali, sorry, not to waste your time, but thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody. Please check out Ali. Description has all of her links. Uh, and I will see every single one of you. Uh, I might have one more interview and then live stream. Okay. All right, guys. I yeah, can't oh, wait to watch uh, your interview with Peter. So make sure you get that to happen. <laughs> I need to. I need. I need to send the DM or you know or, or the email, whatever I need to do. I need to. I need to be brave. <laughs> yes, do it. Just do Shoot it. Okay. Shot. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you guys again. See you.